Well, hello there, lentils and goober peas of YouTube. I'm Clementine, and as always, I'm Super Saiyan. But never mind that. This is one 1994 Lotus Strat copy. And in the last video, I showed you all the different sounds it could make. <laughs> Well, by the end of this video, you're gonna understand this crazy headache rat nest of wires. We're gonna make some simple cartoons and diagrams of series, parallel, in phase, out of phase. You're even gonna hear audio examples of all the different wiring combinations with the easy to follow color coded schematic. I'm even gonna give you a full diagram of the wiring scheme. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned and roll that beautiful bean footage. So I have this strap and it'll do all this series, parallel, in phase, out of phase stuff. But exactly what in the hell does that mean? That means this. So let's say we got two small incandescent light bulbs and a D cell battery. I know what you're saying. What the fuck does this have to do with guitar wiring? Well, just wait a minute and I'll show you. We got these two light bulbs. You ask somebody to hook them both up for you to make them both work, they might do it something like this. As you can see, there's a wire going from one positive to the other and from one negative to the other. Well, this is called parallel. Both light bulbs will come on. If one of the light bulbs burns out, the other light bulb will stay on because there are two wires between them. Here's another way to do the same thing. As you see, still two wires between them. That's how you know it's parallel. So if one of them burns out, the other one will still stay on. Now, look, here's a different way to do it. There's only one wire between them. This is known as series. The positive from one is hooked up to the negative of the other. Now, if one of these uh, light bulbs burns out, the other one will not burn because there's no way to complete the circuit. And now, for a simple way to understand this phasing bullshit, we've got an amp and two speakers. We hook a wire to each positive and to each negative. When the amp hits, they both move up at the same time. They're both going out. That's known as in phase. And as you can see, they're also in parallel because there are two wires between them. But now you can hook them up like this, where one moves in and one moves out. That's known as out of phase. And if you see, there's still two wires between them. So that's out of phase parallel. But now we can come back with our blue wire again. There's one wire between them. You got one going from one positive to the other negative. They're both moving out. They're still in phase, but there's only one wire between them. So that's series. And that's series in phase. Now let's say that we switch that one wire in between them to the other side so that when the amp hits, one goes up and one goes down, there's still one wire between them. So what is that called? Are you catching on? Series out of phase. I'm sure some of you out there in YouTube land are still going, okay, so what in the hell does speakers and light bulbs have to do with guitars or that crazy nest of wiring that you showed me? Well, here's how it works. Let's say we got two pickups. And we want somebody to hook them up. They'll probably do it this way. This is parallel. You can tell it's parallel because there's two wires. Does this seem familiar? You may be saying to yourself, why would somebody want both of these pickups to run at the same time? Wouldn't they just both sound the same? Well, no, because when I pluck the string here, I want you to see. It moves a lot over here and not a whole lot over here. So that means that one... Uh, pick up the one closer to the middle of the string is picking up a larger motion or more of a bass note and this one over here or over here is picking up less vibration or more of the high pitch harmonics this is like the number two or four position in a Stratocaster but not exactly the middle pickup on a Stratocaster is reverse polarity it's basically flipped over like this that would make it out of phase the way that they achieve this is by winding one pickup clockwise and the other pickup counterclockwise. If you don't understand how that works or you wonder about 
pickup winding, you can watch the video in the description where I build a pickup out of household items. A pickup is a simple device. It's basically a few magnetized metal poles with a coil of wire wrapped around it. So in this reverse polarity wiring configuration, this is parallel and out of phase. So one may also ask themselves, what would be the difference between them hooked up forward or backwards? Why would you hook up one pickup backwards? Well, instead of these things adding the sounds together, one will subtract from the other and you will only get the difference in between them. And it makes a high pitched nasally sound. Other than that, it also cancels out all electromagnetic interference or hum. But here comes our blue wire again. And if you remember what I said before, since there's one wire in between, they're in series. But because of the reverse polarity of the second pickup, they're in series out of phase. Now back in the day, like in the 1930s, there was a man named Seth Bubba, oh yeah, who did this. And uh, instead of just thinking, oh, that sounded pretty good, he was a smart guy. He shortened the wire and put the two pickups beside each other. And he put a metal plate on the back of the pickups and he patented it as an all new thing. And he sold this patent to the Gibson Guitar Company. And you probably know of this kind of a pickup. It's called a humbucker. For the continued duration of this video, you don't have to worry about that middle pickup being out of phase. For one, it simplifies things, and for two, my middle pickup simply isn't out of phase. It is in phase. And here we find ourselves back at this rat nest. Here's what it looks like as a clean schematic. You may want to pause this here, or even screen cap it if you would like to install it upon your own guitar. These symbols here are simple on and off switches, single pulled switches. And this one unique symbol is an on-on dual pole switch. So let's say we turn on this switch and this switch. That would give you a simple position one or a neck position of a plain Telecaster wiring diagram. Now if we also turn on this switch, you will get a neck and middle or two position of a normal strat wiring diagram, which is in phase parallel. Now starting again with everything off from square one, we turn on this switch and this switch and then set the two pole switch to the middle pickup position, you will get this. On my guitar, this is series in phase. But if you have normal strat pickups with the second pickup or middle pickup out of phase, then you have just created a neck position humbucker, not unlike the one position of a Gibson Les Paul. Once again, starting from square one, if we put this switch, this switch, and this switch on, and then put the two pole switch in this middle position, you will get this, which is an out of phase parallel sound, which would be a very thin and hollow sound, as the pickups would be subtracting from one another. Well, this is a thumbnail to the last video, and it says 20 plus tones, but that isn't exactly right, because as I've found, some of the wiring combinations will actually mute the guitar, or they just do the same thing. So as it turns out, there are 15 different tones, and I wanted to demonstrate all of those tones, so I created somewhat of a little song. I did the same riff in every different possible wiring combination as I show the wiring diagram for each one, so that you can see what difference it does or doesn't make to the tone of the guitar. You may want to break out some headphones for this part to see the subtle or not so subtle differences between these wiring schemes, and let's get started. So this is an old Japanese hi-fi. And what we got going on here is it has a solid state guitar amplifier head in it. And I have nothing but just a naked wire running in there and a BM800 microphone going into the interface and then to the computer.
That just about does it for this video. I'm Clementine, and if you like what you saw, maybe give her a thumbs up or subscribe because next time we're working on a 75 Global Hummingbird. It's got a warp neck, some super high action, and a couple of other horrible secrets. Okay, guys, I'll see ya, and remember... Don't go fishing in the septic tank.